Hey, what's up, YouTube? Welcome to my review of this Cranach multi-tool. You're at the We All Juggle Knives channel, by the way. Welcome, one and all. All right, let's go through the tool set. This has an opening slot for one-handed opening on a plain-edged knife blade, and that is a locking blade. It's got one-handed opening on a wood saw, and that also does lock. It's got your typical multi-tool pliers, combination pliers with wire cutters. It has a pocket clip, you can see that there. Now the shorter tools are all outboard tools. They do not lock, however they do have strong back springs. That is a reamer awl, pretty useful, we will demonstrate that. That is a lanyard hole, and you've got a Phillips screwdriver, always handy. On the other side, you've got a short file, it is a two-sided file, and you've got a bottle opener, with a screwdriver at the end and a wire bending notch. And you have a can opener with a wire stripping notch. So no scissors, no serrated blade, and a very short file. It's a minimalist tool set, but luckily the price tag on this was also very minimal. When I first got this multi-tool, the pivots were extremely tight. So I had to adjust them. I would recommend adjusting them. I used those two uh, Torx driver sets you see there and when one of them stripped, one of the pivots, I had to use those pliers to adjust them. The second thing I did, I sharpened the blade a little bit. That is my Spyderco Sharp Maker. So before using your multi-tool, I would recommend those two steps. Adjust the pivots and sharpen it a little bit. Here is the pouch that it did come with. As you see, it has a belt loop there and it has a snap closure. And it's a pretty sturdy little belt pouch. But it also has a pocket clip, so there is the pocket clip just being a pocket clip. It's not too tight and it's not too loose. Alright, let's do some things with this. Alright, there I am drawing it down a piece of wood doing a little carving. So what's the lowdown on this multi-tool? The normal price is listed as $20, but when I bought mine it was discounted by $5, so I got this for $15. A couple weeks after that, I noticed Amazon put a digital coupon and it was already marked down so the coupon was for five dollars so at that point they were selling these for like ten dollars and I did buy a second one because having already had one in hand I understand the quality level and basically ten dollars was a great deal so thus far this has been anywhere from ten dollars to twenty dollars now if you want to pick one up for yourself I will include links in the text description box when I purchased it, it was being sold as the Cranach multi-tool, but I've already noticed that there's a, another seller that has a different brand name. So you might see this exact same multi-tool being sold under many different names, many different brands. The low price is one reason I felt that this deserved a full review because when you're just browsing around and you see something that inexpensive, it makes people curious and I want to help people know like exactly what they would be getting uh, if they do pick up one of these. Now, when I first saw the tool set, you know, a very minimalist tool set, I was a little skeptical because I was like, ah, this looks like sort of a bulky, kind of full-size, slightly heavy multi-tool, but it doesn't have many tools. However, once I started actually using it in the real world, I did start to be impressed by the capabilities it does have. And that is very often the case, you know, uh, that's why I test everything out. I don't prejudge it. I don't just look at like a list of tools and oh, you know, it has 20 tools so it's good, but if it has 13 tools or 14 then it's bad. That's that's not how I assess something. I get out there, I get out in the dirt, the mud, the you hear the background noise. There's like mosquitoes buzzing around, you know. But anyway, as you've been seeing, this is actually surprisingly good for carving and for whittling. Like I said, I did sharpen that blade, but I only sharpened it for a minute or two. You know, I was surprised. Now here it is going to use it as a, a paring knife, right? Peeling an apple. But I was surprised how easy it was to sharpen and how sharp that it got in a, a short amount of time. Now a paring knife is very thin, but this blade is not excessively thin. So the fact that I can use it like a paring knife, it just speaks to sharpness. And now this could cut up meat as well. I, you know, I'm not gonna 
cut up a squirrel or anything, but I have no doubt that it could. Now here it is cutting some paracord. Now this was after I pushed it through a lot of dry pieces of wood, right? And it's still sharp. I mean, it just, uh, it goes through the paracord pretty effortlessly. It's a useful blade shape. It has a little bit of a belly for slicing, a pointed tip for starting cuts. Here it is on some, it's a seat belt surrogate material, heavy duty nylon strap material. Now a fully serrated blade would be better for this task, like ripping and tearing through. Uh, but for a plain edged blade, it does pretty well. All right, next we have it on paper. Here I'm going to use the spine of the saw to generate sparks using it as a striker on my favorite uh, six inch fire steel. Now the spine is sharp, it can also be used to make bark scrapings. And as you see, it was uh, definitely useful in striking that fire steel. And there is a little bit of birch under those uh, whittling shavings. Yeah, if you like bushcraft, a saw is always pretty useful. All right, and so is a, a good fire steel, that's my favorite one. Now on many saws, the teeth are straight up and down and symmetrical, but on this saw, the teeth kind of point back towards you, so they cut a little bit more on the pull. I did have to turn the volume off temporarily for these saw clips because it started raining and rain plus the tarp I have and the microphone. Uh, that will sound like static, but it will be back. All right, there is groove number one. So what I am showing here is just making, we're going to make two grooves in this piece of wood using the saw. And then once we have our two grooves, uh, you'll see where we go from there. But the saw is doing well. All right, those are our two pretty deep grooves. And now we are going to connect them to form a big old notch using some blade work, right? So the saw and the blade, they form a great, great little team, a great little bushcraft team. And I did speed this footage up a little bit for time purposes because you do get the idea. But yeah, it started raining on me, but this clip was, these clips were filmed later in the day. So they're the only ones with rain, so don't worry. Uh, but yeah, the show must go on. I mean, rain, you know, I just improvised a tarp and kept on going. Yeah, that blade did well too. So there is our big giant notch brought to you by the saw and the blade. Oh yes, you know, mad skills. Feel, feel the bushcrafting. All right, next up we got the reamer. Yes, and I did speed up this footage because uh, it just takes a while to uh, drill through that dry wood by hand. All right, but a reamer is for making or enlarging holes. It could also be used as an awl, which is a punch, right? A puncturing tool. Uh, but it does not have a hole, right? So you can use it as an awl, but not necessarily as a sewing awl. All right, so there you see it went through and we're, we're going through in the other direction, tunneling through the wood. There you go. So that reamer does work with a little elbow grease. We added another hole to the, the board of reamer testing. All right, here is a screwdriver. Now this is the Phillips screwdriver. And that is the handle of my Kershaw Camp uh, 12 machete, right? So this got this has two screwdrivers, pretty useful, pretty useful sizes and types. Here is the other screwdriver, which is at the end of the bottle opener. And again, I did speed this footage up. Okay, so you see, we loosened up the pivot a lot on that uh, Emerson Persian, and now we tightened it back up. Oops, too tight. All right, and just right, right? So pretty useful, the screwdrivers, but wait. All right, don't worry, I'm not gonna drink this crap. I just got anything that the gas station had because I had to demo that bottle opener for you, All right? But this also has a third tool on that same implement. That's a wire bending notch, All right? That just helps you manipulate wire. You can bend it into different shapes. Like for example, that triangle. And, you know, now you can hang that on something. So three tools in one on, on that little short implement. All right, here are the pliers. They are spring loaded as you see there. All right, and that is as wide as they open. Many uses for pliers. We're gonna start off with cutting some easy wire. This is a soft bendable wire, but sometimes it needs to be cut anyway. And it does well on this task, definitely. 
Yeah, there. I mean, you're always going to find uses for pliers. That's one of the whole reasons why multi-tools exist. All right, here is some harder wire. This is, that's three-strand wire. And some of my subscribers have to cut this stuff on the job. And it does pretty well on that. Does anybody else hold it upside down like I do? Look how, look how well it goes through that. I just feel like that gives me more leverage. Yeah, it did, it did really well. It does really well on this task. So if you have to cut it on the job, it'll get the job done. All right, and of course, it, these are combo pliers with needle nose and gripper portions. So you can just uh, turn something, you know, your, your nuts and bolts, or you can just hold something in place if that becomes necessary. All right, so you're cutting wire. You're gripping stuff. You can also use the uh, the needle nose part to like reach in and manipulate like small things like, you know, just pull that strand of wire out. And here's my Stanley utility knife with the snap off blades. And it's just another use of the pliers. You can reach in and, and grip and grab things strongly. And we got a can opener tool. That's That's old school, you know, no pop tops. All right, I'm just going to show you that that it is sharp enough to do its job. I'm going to puncture this. We got got some tuna here. All right, and as you see, it is well sharp enough to do its job. I'm not going to open the rest of it because I don't want that tuna juice on my gloves. But this same tool has a wire stripper, and it works well. Now, keep in mind, that's made to be used right-handed. I am left-handed, but I did use my right hand. And, uh, yeah, it strips wire. All right, here is the file, and now this is not sped up. I just drank a ton of coffee. No, just kidding. But here is that short file, filing like a rusty nail. And it is such a short file, it's really just like more of an afterthought, you know, kind of better than nothing. But as you saw, yeah, it did knock a little rust uh, off of that nail. Okay, and now here is the lanyard hole. Are you really demonstrating a hole? Oh yes, if, if you put it on the multi-tool, I'll demonstrate it. This is, uh, this is a lanyard hole. I've always been a big fan of holes. I, I was into holes before they were cool, you know what I'm saying? I mean, if, if you're a guy, you probably like holes too, all right? These videos are not made for kids. But how can you review a hole when a hole is just like the absence of a thing? Well... Good point. I guess I'm reviewing the ring that makes the hole, but there it is. All right, so final thoughts. This thing is really useful for the price. I'm most impressed with the blade because, you know, this thing is is very strongly built. The blade sharpens up nicely, and it's a fairly large blade for a multi-tool. And, I mean, I used it for a lot of bushcraft stuff, and it, it held up. So, yeah... The most useful thing on this is definitely the blade. Like if you carry a multi-tool instead of a knife and you use the multi-tool blade, this is very good. The second most useful thing on this, probably the pliers because they can be used to grip, to, to grip and grab, to cut wire. A third most useful feature, just the screwdrivers. I mean, you can always find a use for uh, those uh, sizes and types, those two screwdrivers. So very handy. And the fourth most useful, probably the saw. Not everybody uses a saw, but if you like bushcraft uh, or woodwork, it's definitely good. And as I said, not the best saw, but certainly good enough, especially for this price. Very usable. So my final conclusion, this thing is awesome for the price. I mean, like I said, I got one of these uh, uh, for $10. If anybody knows of a $10 multi-tool that might be better... I mean, feel free to recommend because I'm always looking for more stuff. But I mean, this is between 10 to $20. I feel like even the $20 price, very reasonable. You know, it has a minimalist tool set, but I'm willing to accept that because it's just so inexpensive. And so it would be great as, as a backup, for example. Yeah, the only downside was the over-tightened pivots. But once you loosen up those pivots and so that the one-handed act opening actually works... Uh, this thing is really great for the price. So I definitely feel I got my money's worth, and I'm glad I, I picked uh, two of these up. All right, so check out the links in the text description box, because if you don't like this multi-tool, or let's say you like it, but you want a more comprehensive tool set, I do have a list of very good inexpensive multi-tools, like my top 10 or top 20, 
will be listed in the text description box for your convenience. There are the, the multi-tool market is on fire right now. There's so many good options and you don't have to break the bank to get something that's usable. So check out those links. Those do help the channel and I really appreciate you using them. Now, if you enjoy videos like this where I give you information about an item as I demonstrate some of its features, feel free to subscribe if you haven't already done so. All right, this has been We All Juggle Knives. I'm out.